birds. Last video you saw that I got this brace removed I got it put in the other cab and next thing I need to start working on are these uh, these cab mounts I was gonna salvage these but when I clean these up I notice that they're badly pitted and I shot some primer on here just hoping hoping to be able to kind of see it a little bit better but these are badly pitted and I just decided you know what it'd be easier just to get new ones to be done with it as opposed to try to salvage them because I'm going to have to clean all this up and I just, you know, and, and then peeling these away and trying to salvage all this metal is just a pain. So I just decided to get new cab mounts. So that's what I've done. So i got these new cab mounts. These are from Dennis Carpenter and they came in raw steel. I thought they would at least come e-coat, but they didn't. Um, so I'll have to clean these up. There's some a little bit of surface rust. Just get some... Uh, steel wool or some scotch bright or something and clean the inside of these up and they're not drilled for the uh so the bottom would be right right in here and they're not drilled so what i can do is i can get these on here and get up under there and mark where my hole is going to be so i can get these absolutely perfect this one is completely gone this one isn't much better This is about the 19th time you've seen this. I'm gonna come in here first thing so I can see the spot welds and cut them off. using a spot weld cutter. This is my third one. The kit that I bought came with three of them and cutting everything out that I've cut, it's about freaking done. This is the last one. It's holding up for right now, but uh, I'm not expecting it to last much longer either. <laughs> So I've got all these, these spot welds are cut, the pieces are moved. I've just got a couple spots that are trying to hold on up here. I don't want to damage this lip right here. And then this kick plate or the toe plate or whatever you call it, uh, that portion of it, I'm going to end up cutting. So I want to maintain uh, that area and I want to keep this as straight as possible for the new floor pan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up cutting it right under here. That way I can lift this up and I can break it off. Right I got that broken off, so I'm using a flat disc real quick. I'm going to clean up all these really spot welds. Right?
worried about saving any of this because it's all going to be replaced. The uh, panel right up in here and across will likely be, I'll probably come in right here and cut it. But uh, right now, if I can work. Now I'm a piece of the motor, or the uh, cabinet. Kind of took these edges off a little bit. It was a little kind of curved up right in here, so I just knocked those down, cleaned this up. What I'll do is when I'm I'm just gonna I'm going to attach the mount up here, and then whenever I uh, I get everything on the frame where it's supposed to be, and I get the other floor pan in, and then that, that allows me to adjust it to make sure that I get that tight fit. Got the second one off. It was just like this, the first one. I've got a little tear right here. This one didn't want to come off. But again, this is one of those things that'll be easier to fix from the inside. And if I were to do that right now, I'd be welding upside down. I'm not the best welder when it comes to welding upside down. So I'm gonna get a wire wheel. I'm gonna wire wheel this stuff real quick. And then uh, I'm gonna wire wheel the inside of my mounts On second thought, I'm just going to blast it. I think it'll be faster. It'll definitely be cleaner, at least the metal, not everything else. Something I thought about was these are these came in bare metal and I'm gonna be honest I got these from Dennis Carpenter I'm a little disappointed that these came in bare metal and not in an e-coat but you know that is what it is and I was gonna spray these with an epoxy but it's a smooth it's a very shiny very smooth metal and epoxy is great for direct to metal but it needs a mechanical bond so I'm just gonna go ahead with some rattle can etch primer just to get it in here just so I've got some protection on the inside. Got them an etch primer front and back. This is just to keep them from rusting up on me while I'm working on them. I'm working with the cab and everything because the inside or internal structure is not exactly easy to get to and sandblast whenever the time comes. But what I'm planning on doing is when I get these installed and I get the new floor pans installed, I'm going to pull the cab back off. So I've still got to get these corners down here and I'm going to get those in and when I get the cab off and I get all the sheet metal work and everything done underneath it then I'll sandblast the whole thing and then I'll epoxy it and then undercoat it 
So there is a plan. There is a, I do at least have an idea of what I'm doing and how I'm going about it, but it's just a matter of getting there. And this right here, I've thrown some, thrown some weld through just in this area. Um, I'm only gonna need it right here along the top and right down here, but it wasn't anything just to get a couple more inches right there. So I did that on both sides. So um, same thing, when I get everything in here though, I'll clean this metal up. The area where I'm gonna weld, because this weld through primer, it just it's not it's not the be all end all. And you can see there's a lot of damage right here when I pulled that piece off, so I'm gonna have to get in there. But I'm gonna have to correct that from the inside. I need to mark the center line on the front of these. Alright, I don't know what happened. Uh, the edge primer that I put on was a complete and utter failure. It just peels right off. So what I'm doing right now is I'm preparing the surface so I can put on the epoxy instead. The epoxy requires a mechanical bond versus the chemical bond. So I don't know if it's just humidity is too high, temperature was wrong, stars didn't align, I don't know. I lost the phone number to Miss Cleo, so she can't tell me. The mechanical bond, I don't have to worry about it dissipating over the next couple weeks. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to prepare the entire surface on the inside here. I'll hit the edges with my weld through primer. I use that over there on the cab so I know that it's, it's sticking and it's working right now. I'll get these in, then I use the access holes to shoot the entire inside with the paint whenever I paint the whole underside of the cab. Right, for the body mounts I'm going to be using this uh, Prothane kit. The Prothane kit requires that you use the original uh, the original bushings and washers and things like that, but of course mine were completely destroyed. They're all they're all shot But look right here on the end and see that this does actually fit It does fit it does fit I'm just using the wrong flipping ones or what? Okay, I tried to um, start it off the segment trying to show how I put these polyurethane bushings together. I realized I'd completely screwed up. Had to go back to the drawing board, figure out my new design, and uh, forgot to turn the camera back on. Essentially what I've got, there's, there's uh, these are for the back, and these are for the front. And you can see that these are a lot taller. And inside there, so I've got these 5 8 bolts. Got the washers, the top and the bottom, yada yada. Okay. What I came up with was making these sleeves. And essentially, what this does is this sleeve fits down inside of here. I pressed it into place. I come out with these, and then uh, and you can see how they're how they're pressed in right there. And then uh, just shot them with some black spray paint real quick. And what the what these do is. I'll fit down in here. The large one fits inside the large one. The small one fits down inside the small one. And it keeps these spacers from moving around on me. And this portion right here, this is where it actually fits into the, um, into the cutout on the frame. And I've got a large washer on top. a 5 8 inch grade 8 bolt it's a 4 inch the two and a half inch shoulder so I'll take my washer bolt 
This will go up against the bottom of the cab. That'll slide down into it. Come out on the other side. I've got a washer on the bottom that fits. 5 8 washer. And then I've got a lock nut. Boom. So that's how that works. So I had to figure this out because I couldn't find any sleeves. I got these polyurethane bushings. I like, uh, I like polyurethane. Polyurethane, it, it tends to hold up a lot longer. It doesn't trap moisture inside of it like rubber can. And so over the long term, I don't have to worry about things flexing or moving on me while using the polyurethane. So that's why I chose this. Ultimately, I think it ended up costing more because um, I had to buy the hardware. I had to buy the metal to build these sleeves. It took me all flipping day and I broke my vise, pressing them in, even though I, uh, there's a little tiny, little tiny seam right inside there. I didn't account for that whenever I put these together. And so I ended up pushing out a lot of metal and I ended up breaking my damn vise doing that. I'll try to fix that later. Getting the cab mounts on is gonna be a process of marking out and drilling all of my I left the um, I left them inside here to cure. So you see I've got a lot of parts. A lot of extra extra spare parts, extra core support. I do have a tailgate. I do actually have a tailgate. I will be getting to that. I have to repair that corner. For right now, this is what I'm after. I've got uh, that's weldable primer. It goes all the way around the edges, and I'll shoot the inside with. Uh, I'll shoot the inside with the edge primer again. So what I need to do is mark out, mark out all my holes. I'm going to be three in here, four over here, the two, and then just run down every couple of inches and mark all these holes. So I'm going to get to do it. I'm going to start marking my holes. Now my step bed out, I've got all these pilots drilled. I'm just going here and opening these up. Right here, and it's on. It's present on both sides of the firewall. And what uh, I found was that the stock cab mounts. There's these. Uh, you get the little tab right here in the middle that I've drilled the three holes into. That fits just to the side of that. Basically, it's putting that little hole or that flange right between these two. Now that's not the final measurement, but it's a good place to start to figure out where everything needs to be. And I can clamp it, knock this down. I want this as tight against the front as I can get it. And then back here, between both of these mounts, I've marked a center line. That center line, uh, center to center, needs to be 45 and a half inches. And that's on the frame, how far the holes are center to center. I just go from the tip of the, my tape out. It puts me right at see where my score mark is, right at 45 and a half inches. So I know that now that these are exactly where they need to be. I need to get this fitment as tight as I possibly can. And I'm going to massage it into place. I'm not worried about the bottom so much, just the top. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. Tight in that corner and then double check my measurements. Now that I've got everything where I want it, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to mark my, my holes. That way I can, 
and then we're going to take off the paint. Kind of clean it up in here. Again, even though this is um, etch primer or weld through primer, excuse me, I like to clean up the edges a little bit. I found that I get a much better weld that way. Took these off, I cleaned up behind them, and then I uh, put them back on and remeasured again, 45 and a half inches to my center mark. So I'll weld these up real quick. I'm just gonna get the tops of them. I'm not gonna get the whole thing because the floor pans are coming out next. This will keep them from moving while I'm trying to get everything adjusted. I don't want to completely fully weld them in yet and then have to cut all out. That would be a nightmare. So that one I'm proud of. Getting better at them. Getting better at them. Work on, I'm going to move over here to this other side. So far everything that I've done in this project has been by myself and that includes moving these big parts. I left this cab on, my, on its back by myself. place everything's lined up getting this thing lined up was a flipping nightmare let's see how all the measurements fit problem I've got is these four inch bolts these are grade eights and they're four inch uh, by five eighths are too short in fact whenever I'm uh, whenever I put the lower bushing on I have about that much thread sticking out so I've got these. These are grade 5 bolts. They're absolutely not going to be used for a uh, permanent solution, but they'll at least allow me to bolt the frame on, or the, the cab onto the frame. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get this one finished up. Um, like I said, I'm just, I'm just realigning those bolts, putting in the longer grade 5s for right now so it doesn't move around on me. But uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys watching.